Welcome to the Clear the Shelf podcast with Chris and Chris, the show that meets at the intersection of education and entertainment to discuss online arbitrage, retail arbitrage, wholesale, and all facets of selling on Amazon. We'll bring you news, tactics, strategies, insights, stories, and interviews to help you grow your Amazon business. And now, here are your hosts, Chris Grant and Chris Racing. What's up, Amazon sellers, and welcome back to the Clear the Shelf podcast with myself and my vituperative co-host, Chris Racing. This week, we want to help you learn to find the cheapest online arbitrage products possible. If you don't know, you should know that margins are manufactured. They're not given. So we're going to help you build a bigger moat around your products in what we like to think of as a discount deep dive, uh, which makes me go back to discount double check in, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers uh, with State Farm. Uh, but before we dive in, I think you know the drill. Uh, it takes us minutes to prepare for this show. So if you find some value in this episode, do us a solid, hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast player and leave us a review. I know that's a ton of work, but the only way for us to grow this podcast that we know of is to show the algorithm that people are subscribing and leaving reviews for other people to read, and we would really appreciate it. Now, without further ado, let's dive in because there is a ton of ways to make sure that you're getting the deepest discounts possible when you're doing online arbitrage. And uh, I don't know about you, Chris, but I kind of think that I think a lot of people probably skip past a lot of these things uh, because it doesn't seem like a good return on your time invested. Um, and maybe we can kind of break some of those uh, those frames today. Yeah, or it's it's underestimated the impact that stacking all of these have. I, I, if I had to mm -hmm. guess, if we took a poll, I think the most common answer, you know, if we give them four or five methods to stack discounts and lower cost of goods um and the buy cost and whatnot i feel like most of the answer would probably fall into the oh i use two of the four or five you know i use about two methods uh which means you're you're leaving money on the table potentially so mm -hmm. that, that's why i like the idea of this just kind of go through everything and we don't know what the audience doesn't know you know so it's yeah we're just going to lay it all out there with the methods that we know of and that we use. And, uh, you know, if you pick something up, great. It's going to help your bottom line. And if you have something we don't cover, uh, you can email that to us at chris at clear the shelf .com and we'll, uh, we'll keep it to ourselves, but we'll use it. <laughs> uh, so let, let's talk about uh, this. This might be the lowest hanging fruit of all, but let's talk about this one because there, there might be people who have never done online arbitrage before, but, sales cycles. Now, I'm sure that you know what a sales cycle is. If you do any kind of grocery shopping or personal shopping, you know that sales seem to hit on a cycle. Matter of fact, I was uh, I was at Publix a few days ago. Publix sales cycle is like Wednesday to Wednesday. And so when I walked in, they were clearing out all of the buy one, get one free items and they were all in a cart and they were stacking in the new buy one, get one free items. And that's kind of the, that's the easiest example of a sales cycle. If you shop at Kroger, there's always a 10 for 10 sale, I think is what they do. Uh, you know, Meyer has their own cycle uh, and everyone does. And this goes for large retailers too. The, the Walgreens, the Kohl's, uh, the Macy's, the Walmarts, if you pay close enough attention over a long enough period of time, you're going to start realizing, oh, that's when this hits. Um, matter of fact, I, my son, uh, Wyatt, for the very first time, I think he noticed it. No, no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Wyatt. It was Andre. It was my oldest son. We we're walking into a store yesterday and he's like, why are they, why are they having this sale? And I'm like, well, you know, swimsuits and things like that are obviously going on sale because it's the end of July. It's time to move to fall items, you know, back to schools right around the corner in places that aren't Florida. Uh, you're going to start getting less sunshine here pretty soon. And, uh, and you know, people are want to buy long sleeves. And so they're getting rid of all the summer items 
to be able to bring in the fall items. Uh, and we see that over and over and over again with, uh, with sales cycles. But there are places where you can go so that you don't have to pay attention uh, as much. You, you still need to pay some attention, but not as much. Number one, and this one's going to be a little self-serving, uh, it's SalesGazer. SalesGazer.com. It's free. doesn't cost a penny. You go in and, uh, heck, I don't even pull the email addresses out of here, which is a, as someone who likes to think of themselves as an aspiring marketer, uh, this is a, a huge uh, loss. Um, but you can go in there, you can sign up, and it, it's like a catch-all email automatically built for you. You choose the stores that you want to get sales emails from, and then you open up SalesGazer, and it just pops up all the latest emails from all the stores, and it's searchable just like a regular inbox is. Um, I had someone reach out to me the other day, and they're like, why why don't you charge for this? Uh, you know, like <laughs> it's some sort of, of scam or something. But uh, SalesGazer is a great tool, in my opinion. Uh, and I built it, so that uh, that is my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I know it's helpful. You know, you can you can go in, especially when when you target the stores that you're specifically looking for. Um, you know, you could just you have personalized inbox, uh, just stores that you're interested in or stores that are on your radar. Um, and I've I've caught sales that I sales gazer has put me on certain sales. Uh, before anything else, you know, which mm -hmm. is, which is important. You know, the sooner, sooner you get to the sale, <clears throat> you know, the better off you'll be if it's discovered at all. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely helpful. Um, and if you have, if you have the fine tune, like, you know, the, another thing about these sales cycles is the rotations that they're on, right? Cause there's, you know, th this is important to fine tune because you can build consistency. And if you build consistency and learn these cycles, that means you can go back to the same retailer on a regular basis, which a lot of the really, really big sellers, uh, they seem to have their favorite stores. You know, number one, yep. it's important to know where you can get high volume from. And then number two, it's important to be able to buy, obviously, profitable inventory from your favorite sources. So, learning sales cycles is, is very important. You know, like the, um, the obvious, the obvious ones, you know, it, it, uh, certain stores that do the BOGOs, you know, like you, you buy one, get one free or buy one, get one 50% off. You know, you'll have, you'll have stores that you can actually kind of map out or get an email, you know, once a week on what they, the ca entire categories that they're running these, these BOGO offers on. And, and that's where you can do some serious damage. Absolutely. Uh, now, the alternative to sales gazer, uh, because that's always that's always going to be something that's kind of given you a, a forward view is is looking backwards. This next tool uh, it, it is one of the coolest things out there. It's called milled M-I-L-L-E-D. And it allows you to look back at historical sales that are going on. Uh, and a lot of them are going to be in the format of the weekly flyers and things like that uh, and emails that have gone out. But you can look back at specific stores. You can look back over specific time periods uh, and all kinds of things and be able to kind of figure out, oh, well, you know what? Last uh, you know three months ago, they had a sale on XYZ. I'll bet you that they're going to have that sale here coming up again pretty soon. Or, you know, oh, I see that. Uh, this week they do baking products and the next week they do uh, cookies and the week after that they do pantry staples and then they go back to baking products and we can figure out then, okay, here's their cycle for the items at this particular store. Uh, it's it's a killer tool and I can't believe that it's free. <laughs> right. And you can see how sales gazer and milled can work in concert with each other mm -hmm. right if you find a sale and you like it um you can basically go through milled and see based on the calendar looking backwards how often or when you can kind of expect that sale to to come up again you know you can see how um uh, you know whether it's a uh, you know just kind of like oh they do this once a quarter kind of thing or um 
you know, whether it's like a, a Kohl's where, you know, it's essentially always on sale or you'll have these events that are truly annual or semi-annual and whatnot. And you can actually map this out and then you can go store by store and you just, once you build a collection of these, you could basically jump on sales as soon as they're, they're happening because you've learned yeah. when they're happening from milled and then sales gazer will give you the, the go ahead that it's on, um, which is, is pretty important because some of these sales, the, the good sales, I, I forget what's what store I was searching, but um, by the time I found it, a lot of the best discounted stuff that was profitable on Amazon was out of stock mm -hmm. on that store site. You know, so if you can, if you can dial in milled and sales gazer as, as a tandem, uh, you know, project or a tandem task that you could build these stores um, could be very valuable. You could be the one <clears throat> causing that out of stock uh, shaded out uh, uh, card button yourself. Right. Sometimes I wonder how many people we've had on the podcast who are responsible for those kind of stock outs. <laughs> uh, right. And I've got, I've got some ideas, but yeah, I, what you said is really important because I had a conversation with a guy who lives in another part of the world and sells in, in the U S and uh, he said that his superpower was the fact that he's in a different time zone because when sales tend to hit online here in the U S it might be the middle of the night or it might be like, you know, midnight or something. And for him, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. He's had a cup of coffee, you know, he's, he's stretched, He's, you know, he's, uh, he's done his, his keyboard exercises and he's ready to, he's ready to hit the, the sale hard, uh, and then be done by, you know, 12 or one o'clock for the day. Uh, and we're all still sleeping. Uh, so now here's, here's something else you can do. And this is, I think this is probably one of the things that a lot of people don't do because this sounds like work, which is gross. Uh, but manual tracking, you can use sales gazer, you can use milled, but it's very easy for, you know, like everything else for that to be like, okay, that's information in, but that's not information that's going to stay. You know, I'm not going to be able to know that. Okay. Well, three weeks ago, Walgreens had to buy one, get one free on soap. And so that's going to happen again, you know, in six weeks from now, I'm not going to remember that. But if I mark down on a spreadsheet and says, okay, on this day, Walgreens had this sale and the next week they had this sale. Well, now I can go back and check that manual tracking sheet and I can see, oh, this is what happens every six weeks or this is what happens every four weeks. And I can plan my sourcing around that. Uh, and, and that works for seasonal sales too. You know, we know we all know when prime day is going to hit prime day is going to hit in July and it's going to hit maybe in October. Uh, we know when black Friday sales are going to hit. We know when uh, father's day sales and Easter sales and all these other sales that happen throughout the year, we know those ones, but there are sales every single day of the year that we have no idea they're happening because we're not tracking them like we are with one of the holiday based sales. Um, and it's, it's simple to do. It's just, it's in overalls, if you will. Uh, and so it, it, you know, doesn't look as sexy. Um, now this next one here, this one, this one's probably my least favorite. Uh, it's text messages. You probably want to sign up for text messages from retailers you shop at or, or plan on shopping at, uh, because you will get some things that are just, you know, they'll just do it to their SMS list. Um, sign up for a different phone service or, or get yourself a Google uh, phone number or something like that. I have, I can't stand these coming to my phone. They're, they're not as bad as the political text that I can't seem to stop, uh, you know, but they're, they're right up there because they always come at like one o'clock in the morning uh, and I'm sleeping or, you know, or something like that. <laughs> Uh, but they're important. Uh, and then these, I'm going to say a bunch of them here because I think these all should go together. But slick deals, deal news, tech bargains, uh, you're going to want to look at those places. People, lo humans love a deal. It's our version of, 
of hunting. Uh, you know, it's how we how we uh, fill that that want of killing a, a woolly mammoth or something. You know, in uh, in tech days. Uh, but there there are other places like uh, Fat Kid Deals on Twitter. Uh, and there's also Facebook groups full of couponing moms and, and deal Facebook groups. And if you get active in all of those places, you will get notified of deals before your competition does, uh, because someone's always going to be faster and they want to tell somebody about it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, you can add Brad's deals is one that I use. Yep. Um, there's a, a group on Facebook called Swag Grabber. Um, yeah, it, it, this stuff can be helpful. You know, they, they could turn you on to uh, even for your personal use, too. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of I had a lot of these before I even started selling on Amazon. Um, I was signed up to a lot of this stuff um, just for my personal shopping. Nice. So. We'd be remiss if we didn't talk about loyalty programs. Uh, and, and rewards programs uh, the, I would imagine that the one that maybe most talked about in the Amazon space, is of course, Kohl's cash. Uh, I may not be wealthy, but I am rich in Kohl's cash. Uh, you know, you can't put that on the, uh, on the P and L statement, can't pay the mortgage with it, but you can buy your uh, yourself a lot of dockers. Um, <laughs> but there are a ton of other ones. Now, some, are, are absolute garbage. Uh, I don't think that Macy's program is very good. Uh, you know, but I love, I love the Walgreens program. Uh, when, when I had Meyer around, Meyer had a killer program with their M perks. Uh, matter of fact, I was running at least six different M perks, uh, accounts at one time. Um, <laughs> and I did not write that down. I should have, cause that, that probably would have made my life a little easier, but uh, cycling through the M perks program was just an absolute hack, uh, and saved a ton of money. Um, but it's important and, and there's a ton of these, you know, there's Walmart cash, there's target circle. Sephora has points. Puritan has points. Dick's has a program world market. Um, one of my favorites that we can't really use anymore was Clinique. Clinique had a good program. I thought, uh, you could get free mm -hmm. stuff. Um, Here's one of the most important things I think, though, is if you're going to utilize a reward or loyalty program is you need to learn the letter of the law when it comes to those loyalty accounts with the retailers. You see a ton of people. Oh, they took my Kohl's cash or I can't use my my Kohl's, you know, rewards, etc. Learn what makes that happen so that you can either say, OK, no big deal. Uh, that's the way it works. So I'm going to go this other direction or, all right, that's the way it works. So I'm going to figure out a way around it, or I'm just maybe not going to source there. That's why I had six M perks accounts at one time. Uh, I knew that I could get to, you had to do at, at the time, you had to do like $500 in spend and you would get like a $50 uh, credit to use in store. And so I would just track those and I'd be like, okay, I'm, I'm at 475. I'm going to do a $25 transaction and then I'm going to go and I'm going to do another transaction and I'm going to get that account up to the 500. And then the cycle would start all over again. Um, nice. <clears throat> uh, at one point Walgreens for Florida residents only, you could go and pay $25 a year to get a 20% discount that worked online and in store on everything, including clearance and on top of sales. Uh, oh. I don't want to say that I'm totally responsible for uh, Walgreens poor earnings in those years, <laughs> uh, but I put a hurting on them. Um, <laughs> and, and finally they did away with that program, I think two, two years ago. Uh, but these are the kind of things that you can learn by just reading the terms of service where you can leverage that uh, and figure out, you know, where you're going to get banned, where you're not going to get banned, where you're going to have orders canceled. Uh, one of the greatest examples of this, in my opinion, is like Target. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, well, they hate resellers. I don't think that's actually true. I think that they don't like people who try to push their their sales, you know, like I've known people who've gotten banned over the buy one, get one free video game sales they do every year in Q4 
because they tried to buy like 300 units or when they do their buy $500 of gift cards for 20% off, they try to spend $10,000 instead of 500 bucks. Uh, those are the kind of things that are going to get you banned, not just trying to, you know, look like an average retail uh, shopper. Yeah. And, and again, this uh, familiarity is helpful here as well. Uh, you know, if, if you find your, your favorite stores, like I just, Walgreens cash is funding my protein bar habit. Um, I just, I, I actually just placed an order last night. Um, 50 bucks. I, I think it was like 71 cents out of pocket, you know, for that's awesome. Uh, who knows how long it's going to last me, but, uh, but yeah, you know, you can use the stuff. A lot of people use the Walgreens cash for personal shopping. Um, you know, and which obviously helps um, uh, on your own personal finances. Uh, but I love the I love the stores. Here's the kicker: it is again when you when you find your favorite stores, you learn that sales cycle, and you can go back to it. Um, you know, I spent fifty dollars on in in Walgreens cash, and and I mean, I think I still have a few hundred dollars uh, in Walgreens cash as a balance. You know, just because I've, I you know, I churn that I, I churned that much uh at one point in time so mm -hmm. and but the same thing is is you know that's that's built in discount you know if, if especially the sites like what is it sephora you can you can chip away like five dollars at a time yep you know or, you know you use ten dollars and on a two hundred dollar purchase that's five percent you know that, that you you've baked in you know i mean and you can't say that's insignificant because if you put it in perspective people go nuts when which we'll get to later, like a racket in bumps their cash back up to like 10%. When it goes from five to 10%, people go crazy and they, they start yep. shopping all the, all the racket in stores that, that are on this, this boosted uh, promo period. Well, guess what you did. If you, if you just put in $10 in your Sephora rewards on a $200 order, you just did that same thing. But the difference is anyone else that's shopping that store that didn't do that, you now have that moat, you know, you've got $10 of insulation. Um, and, and that's what we do. Maybe we should have brought this up at the beginning is, is, you know, the moat that you're building protects you from what everyone loves to complain about it, the price tanking. You know, yep. if your buy cost is lower than everyone else, how bad can anyone else hurt you? And you bring up a, you bring up a great point. One, it protects you. But two, this is this is one of those things that a ton of people will oh well you know X seller they hate money because look at look at this, you know, but that's the thing. Maybe those folks who are complaining are not as good at stacking all of the discounts that you're able to, uh, you know. And I all my answer is always well you don't know their buy cost and, and that's sort of become a trope in itself. You know, oh, well, you don't know their buy cost. Yeah, I do. It's the lowest it could get. No, you don't know that. Uh, I remember there was a product that I bought one time at Meyer with my M Perks discounts. It was on clearance, uh, and I was able to negotiate a, a discount for buying in bulk. And it was it was protein powder. Uh, it was I can't remember what brand it was. I, they don't make it anymore. But at the time, it was incredibly popular. And I was buying the $75 protein powder for $5 uh, a container, you know? Wow. And like, I mean, I could have, I could have pushed the price down to $15 and still been profitable at the time. Now, I didn't, of course, but you don't ever know someone's buy cost because you don't know what kind of discount they found, uh, you know, did do they have a friend at Lululemon that's getting them the employee discount when we all know that the employee discounts online have been cooked? Uh, you don't know that, you know. Um, anyway, that's a that's a whole that's a soapbox we could hang on for a while. <laughs> um, the next thing we should talk about is, is memberships, and I think of I think of memberships in a couple of different ways. One, I think of it as it's kind of its own moat. And I mean, the common ones, there's Costco, there's Sam's Club, there's BJ's Wholesale. 
those are not a very deep moat. Those are just inches, you know? Uh, but some people are not willing to spend the, what, what's, what is a Costco membership now? Uh, it was 150 for a business membership. Sounds Something right. like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know. Ours is about to, about to renew. I just got my check in the mail. Uh, so, you know, but on top of that, you get money back from each one of those, you know? So we just got our check in the mail. I got 2% back on all the money that we've spent there over the past year. Uh, and you can have more than one account. You can have multiple accounts. They're not going to stop you from buying three Costco memberships. So you can hit your maximum because they do put a, a cap on how much cash back you can get, but you can go and use your other uh, account. I, I've, I know I've got a buddy. He's got like five Sam's Club accounts that he cycles through and, and maxes out uh, all the cash back he gets from them every year. And then you can use that as a discount or use it to, you know, go spend a couple thousand dollars in, in personal uh, purchases. Barnes and Noble, you get what? 10% off if you have their pro plan uh, yep. on all your purchases. Uh, do you know, does that work on like clearance and, and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know for sure. Um, I think it does. I think that's how uh, there, someone in my mastermind was, was just saying um, how underrated the Barnes and Noble pro plan was. Um, and he made it sound like it was, it came right off the top of everything. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. um, now here's where, here's where I think we can make this moat go from a couple inches deep to a couple feet deep. And this is finding other membership sites that are going to be a much tougher pill to swallow than 150 bucks a year. We use Webster Rant Store as an example, uh, and there are others. Okay, uh, Webster Rant Store is just well known, but I know that there are at least a half a dozen other places like this. It Webster Rant Store does not have very much that's profitable if you go and source it regularly, because there's always like $99 fee for shipping. Uh, or they'll charge like a per pound shipping rate or something like that. However, if you pay them $99 a month per location, well, it's $99 a month. And then if you want multiple locations, it's an additional $45 per location. They will give you free shipping on, I think, everything. Uh, they'll also move you up to the top of the shipping queue. So if they get a thousand orders, you know, in a day, they're going to move you up along with everyone else who's paying them that $99 a month. On top of that, at places like Webstaurant Store, they typically have tiered pricing, at least on a lot of things. So if you're buying, you know, one to 10 units, it might be $10. If you're buying 10 to 20 units, it might be $9.50. But if you're buying 50 or more units, it might be $8 a unit. Uh, and so now with free shipping, maybe that kind of thing makes sense. And then on top of all that, you can learn how they do their clearance and sales cycles. You can learn what kind of other discounts you might be able to stack on top of there. You might even be able to call and say, hey, I want to go. Can you give me this kind of pricing if I buy X amount, which I know nobody's nobody's doing that. Um, and there are multiple places like this. You can find other other stores that do this similar thing online. Uh, I would suggest you Google and use ChatGPT uh, and maybe Perplexity uh, AI to go out and look for competitors to uh, places you might want to source and find very similar places. Thank you for listening to the Clear the Shelf podcast. My magnanimous co-host, Chris Rasick, has put together a gift for you for being a listener. It's called the Monthly Goal Tracking Spreadsheet, and it's free. The spreadsheet will help you break down and track how much you've purchased, which should be a leading indicator of how much you will sell. And then you'll be able to track how much you've sold, as well as your estimated monthly profit on a daily basis. This will all feed into the daily averages, so you can ensure that you're on track to meet your goals each and every month. Grab it for free today over at cleartheshelf.com forward slash goal dash tracking. Thanks again for being a listener. Now back to the show. Yeah. What's a uh, Thrive Market? If you heard of that, I'm not sure if they're reseller friendly, but that's another membership uh, site. Yeah. Thrive um, Market. And there that, was, that, I, don't, I, 
I don't know if they're still in business or not, but Boxed was another one. Um, yeah, there's there's a ton of these places. Yeah. Oh, no, they and, went out and, of business last year. Do you know if uh, Thrive Market is, uh, are they connected with, there's a Thrive Cosmetics? Is that an offshoot? That's, that's a good question. I, I don't know for sure. Uh, wouldn't surprise me though, because they're both kind of crunchy, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah both the uh, big granola. Yeah. Uh, so. I, I think one of the reasons we wanted to bring this up is because I actually saw, I saw a Twitter post from someone, uh, someone who I'd, I'd like to get on the podcast, David. Uh, and he talked about, you know, oh, you use, you use this wholesaler to, and he, he was obviously talking about, one of the very easy ones that a lot of people use to get ungated with. Uh, and he was talking about, yeah, that's, you know, that's where I get a lot of my replants, you know, because you're not talking to them. You're not reaching out and asking for a discount and you're not manually sourcing every single product at that store where that is what he's doing. Um, so you just, you just got to go above and beyond a little bit. Uh, we should talk about, credit card rewards you are way better than uh, credit card rewards than i am so I, I want you to take the take the reins on this one yeah i just just flew the family to florida on uh credit card rewards actually that's what so, i'm talking about <laughs> right so um yeah so this is uh the, these are the perks uh you know these are the business credit cards um some people use personal credit cards as well but um it's probably a long-term uh, bad idea. Um, you you want to eventually get them separated, but uh, credit cards offer rewards. Um, most commonly, people talk about cash back, um, and there are different different percentages uh, that you can find. You know, Chase has some where in, in certain categories you can get up to five percent cash back. Um, other ones kind of have different tiers. Um, you know, and then you'll have uh, basically here's the general rule that. that the annual fee, whether there is one or not, and what it is, um, will kind of create a multiple on the benefit of the credit card rewards that you're looking at. Um, and and quick example is um, Spark does it, and uh, a couple of the Chase Inc. cards, uh, the business cards. You could take the no annual fee card and get one and a half percent cash back on everything, uh, and there's there's no limit to that. Uh, or you could pay a small annual fee and you can get a 2% cashback card. Now, obviously, you'd want to do some rough calculations on, on the volume that you're going to run through the credit card uh, to see if it's actually, um, yeah, or to see where that break even point is. You know, if you're going to be putting, and it, and it doesn't take much, you know, if you're doing any kind of volume um, uh, of arbitrage, you know, it, it won't take too long before, you know, that extra half percent is, is going to pay for the annual fee. So, um, but yeah, cashback cards are popular, um, in the travel perks, uh, realm, uh, they will tell you that taking the, ca actually taking cash back is the lowest value reward that you can get. Um, because a lot of these cards, the two main, uh, two main ones, Chase and American Express, uh, have their own branded rewards points. Uh, Chase has Chase Ultimate Rewards, and Amex is, I believe, membership points. And what makes them valuable is those can not only be redeemed for cash back, but you can use their uh, travel partners, and you can actually take the points and get airline tickets and hotel stays um, for free. A lot of times, um, mm -hmm. you know, and, and and these cards come with sign up bonuses that are basically the equivalent of multiple nights of free hotels you know so if you want to take advantage of um you know the the, the location independence that a job like this can give you uh you know using your your purchasing on a rewards card like this can get you a bunch of free travel um and and you can there there are people that are absolutely killing it uh traveling all over the all over the country all over the world uh for minimal if anything out of pocket so mm -hmm. um 
Either. I'm not I'm not great at it, but the Chase Sapphire preferred bonus, uh, you know, the welcome bonus. I mean, it essentially got a first class ticket from Florida to Dubai on Emirates for my wife. You know, mm -hmm. it's uh, by itself. And that was I mean, that was super easy to hit. I think it was only like four thousand dollars in spend uh, within the first three yeah. months. Yeah, and that's that's the crazy thing is that you know if you're in the, these groups like you know 10x and and uh, uh, I forget there's there's a mom's travel hacking or something that uh, there are a few different ones. Travel freely, I think, is another one. Uh, if you talk to them, that you know the challenge can be hitting the spend required for the sign up bonus. Um, you know, and there are a lot of people that that kind of churn these cards. Um, I don't, I don't close a lot of cards, but there are people who basically just move on to the next card, and they're basically just cashing in sign up bonuses, and they're <laughs> racking up fifty thousand, ninety thousand, a hundred plus thousand points per card, and they basically just every, you know, I don't know, two months or something, they 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 get a new card as they're hitting the sign up bonus on the last one that they signed up for. That's crazy. So it, yeah, it is. But uh, the challenge that you'll hear quite often in these groups is I don't know what, I don't know how I'm going to spend $8,000 to get this 120,000 point, you know, sign up bonus, you know, and challenge then, accepted. <laughs> right. Like, I don't know. The only question is, will it take me more than a week or two? You know, it, if you're in this business. So, uh, you know, that's a huge advantage that we have, um, that, that might be overlooked, you know, if you're kind of getting into the, the, the travel rewards and, and the, and the sign up bonus game. But, uh, yeah, it, there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff that could be done. Um, you know, cash back, you know, it, it truly is the least valuable sometimes, but I mean, sometimes that's exactly what people need. You know, you just, uh, mm -hmm. you, you kind of have that cash built in and that's, that's how you, that's why you made the purchase that you did. And, um, you know, I'm not looking down on anybody that actually takes cash back, uh, some business cards, a lot of business cards, there is no other option besides the cash back. So, but, yeah. uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a boost, uh, you know, when you're looking at insulating your, yourself. So, and then, you know what we should, uh, not just the rewards. Um, I mentioned chase and, American Express, uh, pay attention to all of the benefits that your cards offer. Um, because Chase and, and American Express have merchant offers uh, to where you can actually go through and you can get additional cashback percentages or instant rebates that go right on your card. Um, and these can be and I, anyway, there's a ton of, of, you know, single digits to, you know, beyond, you know, you, you can get 10, 15% from some of these, um, chase in general will keep the limit, keep the ceiling pretty low on the maximum mm -hmm. amount that you can earn. Um, however, you know, you can an extra 50 bucks or something like that. You know, the, the spend isn't going to be crazy at all. You know, you an extra 10% back at, you know, a place like Ollie's or something like that, um, you know, up to 50 bucks. It's not too hard to spend 500 bucks on an yeah. Ollie's, you know, I just, um, I just pulled up chase. There's, there's $15 cash back on $49 or more spend at chewy.com right now. Yep. Chewy. Yep. You can get a lot to with chewy. Uh, you know, some of these, and, and that's, that's chase. That's the low ceiling on chase. Amex on the other hand has much higher ceilings. You know, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll often find if you go through, it's worth it to do it on the regular, kind of go into their, their merchant offers and see what they have to offer on the card that you're using to buy your inventory. Uh, cause Amex, some of the ones that I remember, uh, they had a Vita cost where they would, uh, it's an extra 4% up to 250 bucks. Wow. Yeah. And it would just, as soon as, as soon as the charge cleared, they would instantly credit you that 4% back onto the card as like an instant rebate. Um, and that's, uh, that's a lot of inventory, you know, from Vitacost, which you can, you're able to get a lot of inventory from Vitacost. They, um, they're fairly friendly uh, mm -hmm. with resellers, but, and here's the kicker Amex 
will show you 100 offers at a time. Uh, and it's it could be worth it to go in and I, I you could accept all of them, but I accept anything that I think I even remotely have a chance to use because the next day or so after you go back in, they'll refresh it to 100. So by accepting more offers, you're actually able to get more offers. Um, they get a little squirrely, you know, there, there'd be some some weird wine subscription from, you know, uh, uh, some mom and pop store in, in Wisconsin eventually, but uh, it, it increases your chances of, of finding something useful. Let's talk cash back a little bit. Cash back is something that uh, I think Amazon sellers, it might be their favorite thing, maybe one of the most talked about things. Uh, matter of fact, we just had a, we just had Eli on as a guest on the podcast, uh, just an episode ago. And I saw an email from him, uh, yesterday, maybe the day before, uh, $200,000 in cash back over the past year <laughs> that, I mean, one, that's more than the median household income just in cash back. Now, one of our other guests that we've had on, Chris Potter, who's uh, who's a bookkeeper and a, and a tax guy, uh, he's going to cringe at this. But most Amazon sellers are probably taking that as as tax free money, uh, which means the spend power is even higher. Uh, now we're not here to debate whether or not uh, that is taxable or not taxable. You do you. Um, but it's something you need to be making sure that you're taking advantage of. And I think a lot of people probably don't maximize it because it can be annoying. Um, there are there are some extensions that you should probably install, like Be Frugal, Active Junkie, Retail Me Not, Top Cashback, Rakuten. Um, but that's the problem. That's the problem with cashback is you've got you know 15 different extensions installed. And do you really want to use Extensity to have to uh, turn them off and then turn them back on one by one to figure out who has the best cash back? So there are a couple of other options. One of them is Cashback Monitor. That's a website where you can go and figure out who has the best cash back available. Or you can use RevROI. That's a free Google Chrome extension. Uh, I created it. Um, and... It doesn't cost you a penny, but it will tell you this is the best cash back. This is the best discount gift card, and it has links directly to them. Um, and they're not even affiliate links. I could never get affiliates for any of those places, so uh, it, it makes zero dollars that way. Uh, but now, and we've made it so that you do get an alert now, so you get a little, uh, a little like one or two icon over the extension but it doesn't actually pop up. So there's no space being taken up on your actual screen uh, for those of you who, who don't care for that. Um, I'm, there'll be a link somewhere, but go install it. Doesn't cost you a penny uh, and it gives you the best places to get cash back and, and discount gift cards. Um, but cash back is, in my opinion, it's gotta be one of the best things ever because I mean, you can make what four, five, ten, sometimes fifteen percent cash back on what you're buying, uh, you know, and cash back is the reason why I don't buy anything from my phone anymore. I never buy anything from right. my phone. I go to the computer so that I can install or I can use cash back uh, if I'm buying something, whether it's personal or business, um, because it's just, I mean, it's free money sitting there. Exactly. I will, I will yell and, and run across the house. If my wife says she's about to buy something, mm -hmm. you know, from, from her phone, <laughs> like no, <laughs> send me the link. Let me take a look at it first. Um, right. Yeah. It's, it's just something you can't not check, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and again, you know, let's go back to the example of the price tanking, you know, that, that frustrated Amazon seller who's like, I, these people have to be selling at a loss, you know, it, you know, you'll have these days and you know, you'll find cash back. Like you said, like, you know, 15% is not unheard of, you know, like mm -hmm. there are sites that 
continually pop up on a regular basis that will have upwards of 15 percent um you you know you can if you need to liquidate you know it's nice it's it's i mean on the the you know the chris potter you know accounting side of things you know actually connecting it you know it's it's easy to forget how much you made in cash back is, mm -hmm. is basically what i'm saying by the time you know if you get to a you know a zero percent roi situation where you need to liquidate that hurts uh i'm not a fan um that that's a lot of my prime day was you know the 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 roller coaster of hey look at these sales and then i look at what the items are and it's like yeah shit <laughs> you know it's like that's zero percent you know it's just liquid but it was nice to clear the stuff out um i'm sure my my ipi uh will reflect that to see here soon but uh you know but it's easy to forget you know i mean if you made 15 percent on the purchase separate from the transaction it's going to make that zero percent liquidation uh worst case scenario uh a lot easier to swallow you know yeah absolutely um <clears throat> yeah i mean it, it it really is the best now to go hand in hand with cash back we can't we've got to talk about discount gift cards i here's my opinion discount gift cards even though it's widely talked about is probably one of the most underutilized tactics for saving money on products and, and i i mean i know why it's a pain you know mm -hmm. you you have you found a product you found the match on amazon you've gone through the keepa you've decided it's something you want to buy and you found the the discount you found the cash back you found the discount code uh and now you have to go and you have to find a discount gift card and you don't necessarily want to overspend on the discount gift card if it's not a place that you source from often it's because one you may lose track of it two do you really want 37 cents sitting on a gift card that you have to figure out something to to use for um and my suggestion is, is that if that is what's keeping you from pulling the trigger always buy less it's not you know if if you can get a 10% discount on a gift card and you're going to spend $200, but you can only buy a hundred dollar gift card. Well, it's better to have taken that 10% discount and turn it into a 5% discount rather than just forget the discount in total, you know, um, because you can often combine a gift card with your own credit card, you know? Um, mm -hmm. but, but then there's the other, the other thing is, is the keeping track. Maybe you maybe you buy from one particular store all the time. Like for example, we used to buy a thousand dollars in gift cards at uh, Walgreens all the time. There were times when I would have trouble keeping track. Well, you know, did I spend everything on this one? And then I'm standing there in line, uh, and I'm saying, "Oh, well, can you see how much is on this card? And can you see how much is on this?" Because I didn't take the time to write down the balance on the back. Uh, however that was worth the 11% increase that I got in spending power. Um, so the, yeah, I, I don't know. Discount gift cards should be a must for everybody. Just make sure you're tracking them. And I don't have a great way to track them right now. I know that uh, arbitrage card is coming out with something or if they don't have it already to help you track gift cards. Um, they're a little bit of a newer player on the scene of discount gift cards, but their, uh, their discounts are incredible. Uh, but the other places that I know of that you can trust are like raise card cash, uh, top cash back gift cards. I know there are some others, but I'm just not a hundred percent sure about them. I try to keep the amount of places I buy gift cards from kind of small. Yeah. And, and you're right. They, they are slept on, uh, big time. Um, you know, and, and tell me this, here's, uh, here's another, uh, tinfoil hat, uh, theory. If you buy a gift card less than the total amount of the purchase, mm -hmm. it, in my brain, I have fabricated that I feel the order is more likely to go through using a gift card and then paying the remainder on whatever other method. I can I can get behind that. It does 
in my opinion, it does make the purchase look more like Johnny got a little gift card from grandma and uh, and decided to spend the money. And oh, well, he just happens to to want to go ahead and buy 37 bottles of shampoo uh, <laughs> instead of, you know, instead of what uh, yeah. I can get behind Gra that. Grandma, what does deemed fraudulent mean? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I mean, you have challenge uh, tracking gift cards. Buying a gift card less than your total purchase or at the time is is an easy way. You know, mm -hmm. make sure you exhaust the gift cards as you buy them. Um, a little more labor intensive, but you're not going to get away from the added labor one way or another, even if you're stockpiling in advance your favorite stores. Uh, you know, another thing that makes it really annoying is I don't know who else. I don't know how many of the sites do this. I know Ray's does it, uh, which happens to be the one I use the most, which is they just rebranded to gift card exchange, right? GCX. I think so. Yeah. That's stupid. Everyone knows what Ray's is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand the change, but um, so they went from at one point in time, when I first started selling, they were actually, uh, cashback eligible on Rakuten, I believe. So you could get one or two percent on the gift card purchase. Take the gift card, go to the site, get whatever cashback site you were going to use on that site. Pay with you know, you exhaust the gift card, pay the balance on a business credit card, and then get double dip, you know, cash back from whatever site that you used. Um, now the tricky thing is that. This isn't without its own challenges. Uh, Raise or, or gift card exchange or whatever it's called now, uh, they will try to claim your uh, your cookie, your your cashback cookie. Um, mm -hmm. That's uh, one of their main, uh, I assume, one of their main uh, money making uh, uh, vehicles that they use to, to keep the lights on over at their offices. So. You know, whether you need to use incognito windows or, um, you know, separate browsers, if you use Chrome, but then go, you know, to a Mozilla or um, whatever you Apple freaks use uh, for for the Internet. Um, you know, so you got to kind of you got to kind of juggle that a little bit, you know, and or, you know, you could even use it on your phone. You'd have to manually copy the, the you know, gift card codes and, and pin numbers for the gift cards that you do buy. But I, that's another method that I've used to, to try to try to uh maintain the delicate cookie that uh you know places like top cash back use though they they'll get pushed out they got their lunch money stolen all the time in grade school like they just they will bail on their cookie uh if you look at them sideways so now there are there are a couple of things about discount gift cards you should think about too number one Rev ROI, Rev ROI will help you. So another shameless plug for Rev ROI. It, it doesn't cost you a penny. But two, you should check out giftcardwiki.com. All right. Giftcard Wiki is a place that is, uh, uh, it just it lists all of the discount gift cards that are available across multiple marketplaces. They do not, uh, they do not check on whether or not the marketplace is legitimate or not. Uh, just like Rev ROI does not. It, it's just, it's agnostic. It just shows you everything. You have to do your own due diligence, all right? But the cool thing that Gift Card Wiki does is that when you when you go into uh, each of the brands, so like right now I'm looking at Target, it has a little bit of a market trend, okay? Now, they don't tell you a whole lot about when the market trend is, but it looks like right now it goes back to about... April the 30th. So it's going back uh, just about three months. And I can see what the inventory is and what the discounts are looking like. And here's kind of the strange thing that I can learn from like this Target gift card. It seems that the law of supply and demand is flipped on its head with this. When the supply goes down, the discount gets deeper, okay? You, you think it would be that when the supply goes down, the price goes up and the discount would be less, but it's not. Now, I understand why it is that way on a gift card, 
Okay. The reason it is that way is because people are wanting to buy these thousand dollar gift cards and that eats away at the, uh, that eats away at the inventory. Okay. Nobody wants to go and buy the $11 and 36 cent gift card. That's 7% off. Uh, you know, they want they want to buy in a hundred dollar range, a five hundred dollar range, a thousand dollar range, and it's all these weird wonky numbers like fourteen ninety five that have a steeper discount than the ones that are, you know, are in even denominations. So but kind of an interesting thing to see uh, because you can look at the history of of each one of these. Uh, and then if you go and look at a place that's like doing real bad, uh, so for example, let's uh Let's look up big lots right now. Uh, if we look at big lots, we can see that the inventory has absolutely plummeted at the moment because people are buying it, uh, buying those gift cards to go and just wipe the place clean uh, as they're starting to close stores and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's some interesting data that you can gather from there. Hmm. Big lots is in trouble. I hadn't heard that. Big Lots is closed in like 150 stores or so, and uh, um, they are they may be going into bankruptcy. They, mm -hmm. There's rumors that they might just close up shop. Period. Wow. Yeah, that's going to dive deeper into that on our our Wednesday show. Yeah, yeah, we'll have to talk about that. Uh, I think Big Lots they had a, I think it was that's the store that they had a standing standing coupon on an app that i just deleted because i <laughs> i don't go to big lots enough um but they it basically it was like a a, a standing like 10 percent off or a, a you know a five dollars off at 50 bucks or something like that um mm -hmm. i can't remember the app but uh that's a, a good segue into the next uh section too um yes it is coupon codes yeah. Yeah. Coupon yeah. codes. You, I think you make the case for coupon codes better than anyone I've heard, uh, especially when it comes to lead lists. And for anybody who hasn't heard your, your spiel on that, I'd, I'd love to hear it again. You, uh, there's no reason uh, it, it's, it's totally worth your while to search your own coupon code collection or sources that you use even when you're manually sourcing regardless of where you got the lead right uh there may be no better feeling uh sourcing you're looking at a lead list and they give you you know they, they show you the lead and, and they give you a coupon code for 10 percent off uh but then you go in and search your own sources and you find a 20 percent off code so what they the numbers that they show just got even better that's that's such a, you know, Jean-Luc Picard, like, oh, meme, you know, that, that, that's such a great moment. Um, I find that extremely satisfying. But here's here's the logic. Uh, and, and it makes perfect sense. Like, you know, so if you're a, if you're selling leadless, you know, or if you have a subscription and you need to provide X number of leads on every list or whatever your frequency is uh, that you send them out and you have your criteria you know, say it's $5 minimum profit, it's 30% minimum ROI. Uh, and you find a product at a store and, and you find a coupon code for 10% and it tucks you right into that over $5 profit, at least 30% ROI. What is the lead list provider's motivation to look for any further discounts? There is none. They've mission accomplished. They've got their lead. They log it and they move on to finding the next one, right? Because it's it's a volume. They have to get so many leads for, you know, the subscribers that have paid them money to do exactly that, right? But that's it. That's the end of transaction for the lead list provider, which is why it can really pay off if you're checking your own sources because mm -hmm. you can find even more uh, using using your own sites. And the more and this is going to be this could be a little rabbit trail, but the more places in your business or in your life where you can find where those incentives are not aligned, the better you may be able to find a little bit of extra leverage. Uh, kind of a, 
I don't know, maybe maybe that's a is that a razor? Uh, you know, maybe that's a razor that that people could could use. But absolutely. Um, <clears throat> where do you go find coupon codes? Well, there is. We're not lacking anything in this department. There are there are extensions. There are websites, uh, and and for God's sakes, use Google. Um, but the ones that we could talk about, there's uh, Coopert, which is an extension you can install. There's Capital One Shopping. There's Coupon Birds. There's Retail Me Not. There's Honey. Okay. There's Noji, um, and then there is Tactical Bucket. Ta if for those of you who may have never heard of Tactical Bucket, that's a software that's owned uh, by a friend of mine, uh, Javier. Uh, and there's just a massive list of coupon codes that are out there. Some of them are scraped and some of them are actually uh, uh, checked manually by people. Um, and those are kind of, that's all kind of the low hanging fruit. Well, let's talk, let's dive a little bit deeper. Okay. Uh, you can use ChatGPT. All right. And you can just ask ChatGPT, hey, what are what are a list of the coupon codes available for X site? Now it's not always right because ChatGPT, you know, doesn't have access to the internet. Um, but ChatGPT is getting access here pretty soon. But there is currently another option. There's something called Perplexity AI that's out there, and Perplexity AI is essentially a search engine that has a little bit of AI uh, overlord already built in. So you can go and, and it will it will look for your question on the internet and then it will try to summarize it for you. So it'll start pulling out coupon codes and it'll tell you, here's where I found this one and this one and this one, okay? Uh, make sure to be using these kind of tools. You can get ChatGPT and Perplexity for free. You don't have to pay for it. Um, any other any other places that uh, we missed on on coupon codes? Yeah, th this is uh, um, this type of thing where if you if you dig down, if you do a Google search for coupon code providers, um, another example of th there could be not only will you find the the dead body on the back pages of Google search, you know, you'll find some unknown coupon codes um, because there is. There is a hierarchy of effectiveness, you know, like I think everyone, you know, Capital One probably isn't going to have a coupon code that everyone else is going to find, you know, and, and, you know, where you can really put some space is if you have sources that are a little bit off the beaten path, uh, you know, um, and I will, I will mention uh, your, your chat GPTs, your perplexity AIs. Um, and tactical bucket on their discount list. Uh, you can pull those up and you don't have to worry about your your cashback cookie getting hijacked uh, because that's a simple copy and paste. There's no mm -hmm. there's no link to it. Uh, so you can literally just go in, double click, you know, control C, control uh, V or whatever. I don't know. My hands just do it now. I don't know what they are. Um, you know, just go in and just copy and paste code after code after code. Um, without having to worry about losing any cash back if you've activated it prior to. Um, but yeah, it, make sure you dig deep. And here's the, here's the cool thing that some of these sites are doing, um, specifically uh, Cooper and, and Noji. Um, and my mouth wants to to call it Kenoji so bad, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I, have, <laughs> I have to I have to like muscle myself uh, my way through it. Um, and I don't know if if Honey does this or, or any of the other sites, but they actually have incentives built in for users to upload their coupon codes. Yep. You know, so, so what, what can happen is um, uh, it's not a very high hit percentage, but you could actually find some of these one-time codes, you know, if somebody didn't use it or whatever, and, and they say, Hey, you know, I got, you know, like Puritan sent me a postcard with a, you know, and it's pretty obvious that it's a one-time use code. I'm not going to use it. I'll upload it. I'll get the incentive from the coupon site, you know, a little extra coins or, you know, whatever the heck that they're, they're offering. Uh, and if somebody's on the site searching, you can actually grab that code, even a one-time use code and pop it in on something that you're buying right there. And that's, yep. if, if there's no other good codes that are active, you know, on, on a wider range, 
uh, that's a huge advantage. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. It'll be rare, but it, it's it's definitely a, a distinct advantage. You said something there that reminded me, and you just kind of glossed over it. <clears throat> Check your daggone mailbox. Uh, I I'm guilty of this, you know, but I. I will go for a week and I will not check the mail. And then my wife just comes with like this, this bundle of mail on, you know, puts it on my desk and I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot that that mail's a thing. But the amount of postcards that you should be getting from different retailers is probably going to be much higher than, uh, than the average consumer. Uh, because one, the retailers you've bought from in the past are going to send you like win back postcards and, you know, or, oh, we, we think this person's a high velocity shopper. Let's let's give them a little something. But then they're also going to sell your information uh, to, to other places that are going to send you postcards. Uh, mm -hmm. And then outside of outside of that, go check. You, know, you have a buy list in your buy list. You should have a notes section or you should have a coupon code section where you're putting in these things and go check your past leads. You'd be surprised how many times a coupon code will work over and over and over and over again, even though they might give it to you as a one time coupon code. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and if, if you're putting things right in your, in your buy list, you know, with a note section or, a, you know, we have a, we have a section specifically for coupons and sales and things. All you've got to do is control F and look at the retailer that you're shopping at and go through each and every single one really quickly. It will not take very much work. Yeah, and that, that's a good point. Don't sleep on codes that have welcome and a number. Like I, those, I forget what there, I, there was just a site. I put it on on uh, uh, one of the lead lists recently in the last week or two, and I actually put a note. I was like, "This still works," <laughs> and it was like fifteen percent right. off. I think the 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 prevailing code was like ten percent, but this welcome code was still working, uh, you know, for an extra five percent over the standard code. Um, oh, awesome. And some of my some of my favorite man that that last ditch, uh, some of those codes where it's like miss you twenty. Oh man, <laughs> if you see those, uh, I'll go through all these and I'm just striking out. I've tried 30 codes and none of them work. And I'm getting that red, red pop up, you know, like that code is invalid. And then as a last ditch effort, the very last one, I'll pop in that miss you 20. Oh, it's boy. What a, uh, Picard, Jean-Luc Picard all over again, every time. Right. Just so much win. <clears throat> All right, this one we're not going to spend very much time on this because I'm I have mixed feelings on whether this is worth your time and effort. Uh, but there are cashback apps. There's places like Ibotta, like Dosh, where you can like upload your purchases or connect a credit card or take pictures of your receipts, uh, and they might give you a, a little bit of additional cashback. Uh, I think I think even Walmart Walmart may have done this um, in the past themselves where you could upload your receipt like directly to Walmart from shopping in store. And it, like if the price changed or something within a certain period of time, they would give you the difference back. Um, yeah. yeah, that's same idea for some of these cashback apps. I'm just not sure whether they're worth your the time invested because it's usually very, very little uh, for a for a fair amount of effort. Uh, but it is available to you. Just another way to to make a little bit extra. Have, do you use any of those? I don't. Uh, no. Um, the only thing I use is, and this is this is maybe more important for the uh, people doing more retail arbitrage. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you don't have the, you don't have the advantage of, of the the Chrome extensions. You know, if you're doing OA, um, to get as much as you can. You know, if, if you're in store, um, obviously it's it's probably more important. Um, I, I don't use an app, but like there are, there are things like, um, there's a, a there's an outlet store. Uh, there's a big company, um, T Tanger, Tanger, um, however you say it. I've got, I asked all the employees last time I was there and I got, it was pretty even either way. Nobody really knows, um, how to say it properly, but you can actually scan, you can use their app and you can actually scan receipts. 
and you get points. And then after you accumulate points, that'll open up bigger discounts uh, than, than what you have. And that's also uh, a membership as well. It's, it's mm-hmm. dirt cheap though. I think it's like 20 bucks a year or something like that. But then the point accumulation will boost the coupon and, and the discounts that are available to you at the, at the stores there. So uh, awesome. I do that. And I know I, I've, I've talked to people uh, that, that use Ibotta a lot, you know, and, and they, they put the effort in and uh, they seem to seem to do okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. If nothing else, I mean, they, at least they're probably gamifying it really well. Like it probably makes sense mm-hmm. for the, you know, that's kind of, it's kind of cool. All right. Sure. And we should, we should really kind of tie this all together because we've talked about all these disparate things that you can do, but you know, how the heck does this actually work in, in real life? Well, you've got to stack as many of these as you can. And we, we, we sat down and we did the math behind, uh, you know, or uh, away from the public so that we can, can share this with you guys. But here's an example. Let's say, for example, that you buy a discount gift card with a credit card that offers cash back, okay? And you buy it on a discount gift card site that allows for you to use a cash back extension or website, okay? So if I buy a discount gift card on card cash, for example, I can get 1% cash back from top cash back. I can then get another 2% cash back from my credit card company. Anything I buy online is 2% cash back. Uh, now, let's assume that this discounted gift card is it's discounted by 10%. And that's really just to make the math easy. All right. On a $1,000 purchase of discounted gift cards, that would be $30 in cash back between my credit card and top cash back. My spending power, instead of $1,000, it would be $1,100 in spending power, all right? So $1,100 in spending power, $30 in tax-free cash back. Now, when you purchase the items at the retailer, you're going to use that discount gift card, and your purchase is already marked down because you're using discounted money. You bought cheaper money. Uh, You've also now found a coupon code, a MISSU10, uh, in this example, they get you a 10% off on the product. So now you get to mark down the items using the discount code and the discount gift card. And this makes your discount 19%. Now, the reason it's 19% instead of 20 is because that's how math works. And you'll just have to go do this on the back of a napkin uh, or trust us. All right. But then on top of that, you then get to take any cash back from the cash back site on your purchase again if the terms of service of the cashback site allow. Some of them will exclude gift card purchases, okay? Or purchases on sites with gift cards. But if all of the stars line up, essentially you have $1,223 in spending power because of your discount uh, gift card, because of your uh, discount code, and you were able to purchase all of that for $1,000, okay? Now, imagine with us that you have 5% cash back and the terms of service allow you to get paid. You're now looking at an additional $61.15 in additional cash back if you spent that whole $12.23 for a grand total of $91.15, depending on who's doing your taxes, in, in cash in your pocket from all of those different sources, okay? This is how you reduce your cost of goods sold. Uh, This is how you protect yourself from price erosion. uh, And you get some money back very quickly in the form of cash from your credit cards, from the cash back companies. Um, And I guarantee not everyone is doing this work on every single product that they purchase. Right, and that's... (laughs) So that's, I, this might be the, one of our podcast episodes where people actually slow down the payback, playback speed, just to to make sure, because if this is, if you're not using all this, this is a lot to take in, but this is really impactful because there were, there are numbers, there are different plates, right? You're, you're talking about, you know, there's, you're buying power, but 
that $91.15 that you got, that's outside of whatever inventory you're going to purchase and sell on the Amazon marketplace. That's that 91 bucks is yours that, uh, you know, and all you had to do was spend a thousand bucks to get this whole thing started. That's a 9% return immediately, regardless mm -hmm. of outcome. Right. And hopefully best case scenario is there's also profit to throw in there, but that's, that's going straight into your pocket, whether it takes yeah. a detour for on your tax return or not. Right. <laughs> so, and now, and then you uh, to go back over that, I mean, over $1,200 in spending power, you know, it, this was, this all initiated from just a thousand dollars out of your pocket. So it's, it's easy to see how all of this, the cumulative effect of all these individual steps can really, I mean, this is a, this is a massive moat, you know, to be able to buy over $1,200 worth of goods, know that you're $91 profit regardless you know, and, and then go make those purchases, send it in, you know, from there, even if you take a modest ROI mm -hmm. uh, over that, uh, you know, I mean, that compa we didn't do the math on that. Like if you actually, you know, like the ROI after you sell it and everything like that, but you can, it's pretty clear to see where this is going and how powerful this is. Yeah. I mean, even if you just, let's just say, you, say you get a 10% ROI and there's another $122. You know, so if that if all of that was an hour worth of work, well, you're now over two hundred dollars an hour is what you're getting paid, you know, uh, and and that's our goal as as business owners, as entrepreneurs is increasing our uh, our hourly rate, you know, what you get paid for every hour you put into this business. Um, you know, I also I want to I want to kick a few things out on cash back as well. Yeah, you know, there's a couple of ways to think about this. Number one, with cash back, I don't want I don't want anyone selling for a break even or a loss. You know, I want you to make a profit on your inventory, but you could you could pay all of your bills in cash back. You know, you figure out, hey, you know what? My average cash back is five percent. Uh, my monthly my monthly burn is I don't know five thousand dollars. What do I need to spend every single month to have my monthly burn covered by just cash back? Oh, that's, an, that's an easy number to back into. It's a hundred grand, right? Yeah, it's a hundred grand. If I spend a hundred thousand dollars on inventory every single month, I'm going to get five thousand uh, dollars right into my pocket, and that's going to cover my life. And then the business gets to you could reinvest all of that money. You can you know, take your owner's draw or, or whatever you're going to do with that. And, you know, it, it makes life a lot easier. But outside of just taking the money for yourself, there's another thing you can do. You're going to get to a point eventually where you probably need some help. Uh, I have heard stories of people who let their shoppers get the cash back to their own pockets. And it makes it makes total sense. If you are like, hey, you know what? I'm going to pay you a, a buck fifty for every item that you purchase, but you keep all the cash back. If they're spending a hundred thousand dollars a month or more. You know, we've got some. We have some friends and some people who've been on the podcast who are spending a lot more than that every single month, and you're getting five percent cash back. They could essentially be making a ton of money without any money out of your pocket. Uh, and none out of their pocket either because they're spending your money. Um, I remember I the first time that ever really kicked in for me was a Reddit post from a person who was an assistant for like this really rich guy. And they were like, yeah, they're like, I buy everything for like their personal life and their business. And they're like, I made I made ten thousand dollars in cash back last month uh, over their salary. That's huge. Um Yep. So anyway, something to think about. Yeah, I mean, you, and even and adjust this to the scale that you need to. You know, we we've had people on the podcast that that uh, their Audi payment was made with with cash back, mm -hmm. um, and I think just just one site, I think it was just Rakuten was was paying for their Audi. So, um, you know, it, it, the great thing is that it's it's separate too. You know, like you you talked about the business has what it's what it's going to do and it's going to have that return you know the cash back just kind of comes on its own schedule you know so uh 
it's a huge advantage. Um, I hope people picked up uh, at least a little something to, to, to add a little bit extra money um, or lower that their buy cost a little more. Um, yeah. I found uh, I found a quote for this week. Are we ready for the quote? I think so. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, from uh, John Tyler, I liked what he had to say. Um, he says, wealth can only be accumulated by the earnings of industry and the savings of frugality. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. And it's I like that. It, it, it's it's the two parts uh, that, that get you there. You know, they, they what do mm-hmm. they say? They're rich people. Rich people are rich because they don't give away their money uh, uh, too easily. So and this is kind of this is kind of a way to keep more in your pocket. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's that's part of this. This was a great episode. I, I hope this is helpful. This uh, even for me, it makes makes me remember. Oh, yeah, there, there's a little extra step we need to do. But all right, uh, guys, make sure to like this video to keep your cash back off your tax return. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for listening to Clear the Shelf with Chris and Chris. If you enjoyed this episode, please take a screenshot on your phone and share to Facebook, Instagram, or your favorite FBA group. And be sure to tag me and let me know why you liked it and what you'd like to hear more from us in the future. Also, I'd like to give you some free gifts for listening. Head over to rabbittrailchallenge.com and repricerchallenge.com for some free courses to further your business. Thanks for listening.